Hello everyone, it's Dr. Hoffman again, back with another garden cast for Core Wellness TV. Uh, we got such good response and, and lots of comments about the last garden cast, especially from the folks at Raw Food Rehab, thank you. And actually, uh, you inspired me to do some more. So uh, today we're gonna talk about, a little bit more about the freezing concept. Last time I talked about how green food, like, um, like this lacinato kale, for instance, uh, green food has more omega-3 fatty acids in it which allow for more resilience in the cell membrane or the cell wall, I guess, in plants. And whenever, I, last time I want to clear something up. Last time I mentioned why that happened. And I mentioned that whenever the ice freezes inside of the plant, crystals form and those crystals are sharp and that punctures the cell wall. Now that's a really good theory and it sounds good and there may still be something to that because there is a physical disruption that can happen, but on further study, actually, uh, someone commented on my YouTube video that uh, it was not that was not the case, and that it was because water expanded, and it uh, when it water expanded, it actually bursted the cell wall. Well, actually, we find out that upon further research, I think it was from um, Plant Physiology. Uh, it was an online journal. Anyway, it was a very good paper, and it talked about the fact that what happens is whenever the 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 water outside of the, there's inside the cell water and there's outside the cell water. Inside the cell, it's got all kinds of other stuff in it that acts like antifreeze, starches and enzymes and all kinds of things like that. So the inside of the cell water, the water on the inside doesn't freeze. It's got antifreeze in it. But the outside of the cell, that water freezes. And what happens is when those ice crystals form, it creates a chemical gradient. And really, what happens is the water comes from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. It gets pulled out of the inside of the cell, which essentially dehydrates the cell. And um, which is an interesting concept, because that's the same thing that happens in our cells whenever we have, for instance, toxins uh, in, the, in the extracellular fluid. Our body wants to, the solution to pollution is dilution. So whenever our body is toxic with, uh, you know, hor uh, toxic hormones, you know, estrogens, pesticides, um, heavy metals, things like that, things that are floating around in the extracellular fluid, the body in an attempt to dilute that gives up its intracellular water to the extracellular water to dilute those toxins so it doesn't kill us. So, but what happens in that process is our cells become essentially dehydrated. And we all know that a grape is a well hydrated uh, fruit, right? That's because all of its water is on the inside. What happens when it loses all of its water to the outside? It gets old. It turns into a shriveled up raisin. Case in point, looky here. This, now, this is interesting because this is some romaine that I planted, and usually romaine is very hardy. As a matter of fact, I think this was a different seed. If you'll come over here, Rebecca, and look at this, this romaine fared much better. It popped right back up. This was frozen solid. And then whenever that water came, whenever that, so whenever it, it, it melted essentially, whenever it came back up above freezing, the water went back inside the cell. And since the cell wall is so resilient, it can handle that little expansion that goes back in. When the water goes back in the cell, the cell goes and expands. And good thing that the omega-3s are so bendy and so um, uh, basically fluid and they can handle that expansion-induced stress. Actually, the real cause of plant death due to cold weather is called expansion-induced lysis. And you can check that one out on Wikipedia or Google it, and that's basically what the, the actual cause of that is. But back to my original point, this seemed to do well. But over here, look, what does this look like? This looks old and limp. And that's what your cells look like whenever they become dehydrated. So that's a lesson, and by the way, look at the spinach. No problems there. This stuff is super intense because it has got the highest omega-3 content, which I talked about last time. So uh, why is that important for human physiology? Uh, as far as the cell membrane goes, uh, Bruce Lipton, uh, on my most recent post on the blog, I posted, uh, I think it was almost two, two and a half hours worth of Bruce Lipton's Biology of Belief lecture, which is one of the lectures that changed my life when I heard about him talk about the cell membrane. It's so important to make a good cell membrane in your body because the cell membrane is literally the brain of your cell. It's a good way to remember it. The brain of your cell is the cell membrane. It's what 
surveys the or it's what is the interaction with the environment and the so the cell membrane take say this is the cell membrane and this is the environment this is the nutrition this is the thoughts this is the movement your body gets the cell membrane reads that and then whatever you know it has little antennas on it the cell membrane has little antennas and whenever these the environment comes in and interacts with these antennas then it opens up channels inside the cell membrane that go down and talk to the DNA and so it's really the environment that's telling your DNA what to do that's a profound concept so we are not ruled by our DNA we are ruled by what our environment okay so that's the big message I wanted to, to share with you today is we want to build healthy resilient cell membranes because that's what allows our membranes in our bodies hundred trillion cells to work effectively so our environment can effectively communicate with our DNA if this membrane is full of crud from a poor diet poor thoughts and no movement in our body we don't have good communication between the environment and our DNA things break down we get sick we get degenerative disease we get ill and we get old before our time we end up like these poor broccoli plants that I mutilated last time they're all limp and old and that's not what we want to be okay we want to be strong and resilient like this kohlrabi over here look at this how strong and beautiful that is I'm not gonna pick it because kohlrabi makes a nice root that's nice and sweet I don't know if we're gonna be able to uh, to get that much growth this year but we'll de definitely eat the leaves matter of fact I think kohlrabi is one of the most beautiful and tasty brassica family uh, leaves that there is it's so sweet, so nice. So, until next time, Dr. Steve Hoffman, keep thinking good thoughts, eating good food, and keep moving. One last thing, I mentioned raw food rehab. I wanna give a shout out to raw food rehab. Raw food rehab, it's cold out here, my lips are starting to get cold. I wanna give a shout out to raw food rehab at rawfoodrehab.com. Go there, check them out. It's an excellent community, very active. Penny's doing a great job. So go there, check out rawfoodrehab.com, and I'll see you maybe at Raw Food Rehab. Bye.